Hello, everyone. I'm here today to talk about an experience that I had um, that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time and just kind of go over a little bit of the research that I've found along the way. Um, this experience, I don't even know how to begin. So I just have this uh, web page for a visual to give you an idea of what it is that I saw. Um, I'm guessing my experience would be uh, sleep paralysis. So that's what I'm going to say, but I don't think that's what it is. I don't think sleep paralysis is what a lot of the, um, the scientific community would like to say that it is. <clears throat> this experience um, brought a lot of fear, a lot of fear in my life and a lot of questions. So let me just start with the picture and then we'll just go from there. Um, this is from the website unexplainedaustralia.com. I did an image search and it brought me to this. And this tall, <clears throat> kind of a dark hooded figure is what I saw. I saw two of them. This happened about, I'm going to say about four years ago. <clears throat> And it wasn't a very pleasant experience, of course, if you would see something like this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, this website is written by Murray Byfield. He talks about the phenomenon of hooded entities or beings. And he's been following for many years. He has spoken to several witnesses over the years that describe similar experiences that involve these entities. And the hooded entities are usually described as three feet tall. Um, <clears throat> and then he goes on to say as much as six feet in height. Now, I didn't see any facial features, um, but I did get an idea of the height and I would say at least six and a half feet to seven feet tall these two beings were. Now to go into um, my dis my experience uh, a few years ago <clears throat> at the time I was separated from my husband. Um, we we're through separation going through a divorce and he had some things in my home that he would get out on occasion. He worked midnights and sometimes he would come in. It wasn't uncommon for him to come in after working all night and um, getting some of his things and transitioning out of the house. So um, when I had this experience, I was being, I was still in my bed. I was in my room and I was woken up to uh, sensations, uh, very, uh, sex, being sexually aroused, being touched in my private areas below the waist, on my legs and, and things like that. I'm sure I can leave it to the imagination of what I was experiencing. So my first thought was, is this my, you know, soon to be ex-husband messing around? And and not that it would have made it any better if it was. I mean, it would be easier to explain. It wouldn't have left me with so many questions and even in so much terror. But um, that's what I thought. And I remember the first thing that I saw when I opened my eyes, I noticed that it was still, <clears throat> it was light outside. So it was early morning. It was early in the morning and I could see the light coming through the window. And I looked down towards my feet and I saw this hooded figure, very large hooded figure. And I also felt someone restraining me from the top behind my head. So it would be back behind my head. And I was terrified. I was in so much fear and terror that it was paralyzing it was and it was exhausting it was so terrifying and exhausting that i passed out now before i passed out um 
I remember, you know, saying, what are you, who are you? What do you want? What are you doing? Get away from me. And the male voice, it was a male voice, the hooded being that was by my, behind my head. I could see him when he leaned down his face, but I couldn't see his face. I just saw like the black inside and a hood. And he said, what? You don't like this anymore? And I thought, what in the hell? Like, did I, how, what do you mean? Do I, do I not want this anymore? Do I not like this anymore? How long has this been going on? And what did I do uh, to provoke this? And when you read here, this is when awakened in bed or in a dream witnesses describe the hooded fig figures intensely staring down at them, which evokes intense fear and paralysis. And that is exactly what had happened. I was not paralyzed before I realized what I was moving. I was moving around. I was being held down. And when I realized what was going on, I was in so much fear and terror. I mean, if you've, I, I never have been in that kind of fear and terror. So I was, I became almost paralyzed, but I remember fighting them off of me. And the one that was behind my head after he said that in my ear, um, I just remember that the sheet on my bed became, he, the one behind my head, one of them pulled the sheet over my face and held it down. I don't think they wanted to see me, but it was too late. I, they didn't want me to see them. I'm sorry, but it was too late by then because I had already seen, I couldn't see their face or facial features, but I could see this, this figure. And they were holding me down. And I just remember fighting, fighting, fighting all that I could. Um, and just thought, you know, uh, throughout my life, even at a young age, I was introduced to religion, uh, Methodist church. Uh, we go to Sunday school. Heck, my mom even taught Sunday school for a while. You know, she's very spiritual, but then religious and just always seeking the truth. Put it that way. We're always just seeking, wanting to know the truth. But there was more to the, to everything than just this. I'm sorry, it's really hard for me to talk about this experience because after it happened, um, I wanted to report it to the authorities, but I'm getting off track. Um, before I passed out and, and throughout my life, um, I had had spiritual attacks and dreams. Um, I also had a dream. I, I resonate very well with Christ consciousness and Jesus Christ, and I felt close to this person. And I felt that this was something just innately that I could call on him to help me. I even had dreams where I was being attacked. And I remember he came into one of my dreams and he said, you don't need me to come every time you need help. You can do it yourself. You know, you don't need me here physically to help you. You have the power within to fight these things off. So in my spiritual dreams throughout my whole entire life, it's the same thing. It's the same it's a smoky cloud, like a like a little cyclone type swirling thing. It's a gray, and it always tries to get me in a room in my dream where the you know I'm, I end up in a room by myself and the door shuts and locks and here comes this smoky swirling thing and it and it says very horrible things. It says some of the most vulgar, perverse things. And I'm a person who cusses. I'm not, you know, I say the F word every now and then and the S word. And, the, you know, I try to refrain when I do my videos, but I'm just kind of freely cuss at times. I try to watch because some people get really offended. Um, but when I, I'm not talking like cuss words, I'm talking about just cuss words are involved, but they're just the most horrific vulgar words and the smells really bad and I've had to fight this thing off in my dreams I've had people who have you know been around me when I've been sleeping and have these dreams and they say I stand straight up out of bed 
I immediately start talking about Christ and um, asking for his protection. Um, and it helps every time. And so I struggled with that because I'm not a real religious person. Um, I don't like religious organization like the I, I don't like how it's set up I don't think Christ would even like how it's set up but anyways I don't want to get into a debate about that um but I did ask for Christ's help and I knew I knew that I think I said something before I passed out I said my body and soul and heart belongs to Jesus Christ to Christ consciousness is what I come from I come from a consciousness and a love that is stronger and greater than anything and I am protected by that and that's where my soul goes that that is where what my soul belongs to and I just remember I don't know if it was because of the intense fear or the combination of the intense fear and, and terror and then just the the uh the total almost relaxation of something that came over me and was like, you're protected. And I just passed out. I passed out. I, I, I wish I could articulate my words better and do this better because, but it's very difficult because when you have something like this happen to you, normally if, if something in the physical form does something like this to you, you have the ability to do something about it, or you can try to do something. You can contact the authorities. You can tell someone, you know, close to you to help you because it's very scary. It's extremely scary. I didn't sleep for like three nights after that. I, I was terrified to go back to sleep. I was angry. I was angry at these entities, these beings. I was angry at myself because I thought, what in the fuck did I do to, did I bring this on? For my, to myself, did I ask for this? Um, even my friends at the time, they I tried to talk to them, which I could talk to them about anything, and they just kind of they just kind of quit talking to me for months and just said things about how it didn't resonate with them and they didn't understand and and I felt very alone um, through the whole ordeal. I told my, my ex-husband, I, I told him that I was terrified and I think he wanted to believe me. I mean, through our marriage, he could see I, I experienced a lot of things in life that were very unexplainable and it was right in your face. Anybody that's close to me in my life will see these things happening, especially now, like with the word synchronicity and everything. It's just insane how much it happens. It, you can't, you can't uh, deny it or ignore it. Um, but not even just words and synchronicity, but other things as well that kind of goes on in my life. You, if you're in my little circle, you're going to see these things happen. It's just going to be right in your face. You're, you're just there. It's just something that you can't avoid. So I did tell him, and I think that he did believe me, but I don't know if he just knew what to, I, I don't know what anybody, I mean, he could definitely tell that I was afraid. I was terrified. And, um, I don't think anybody would want to make something up like that, you know, and be, and, and make themselves in that state of fear and panic for days, you know? Um, so I really like this description that this person has put. Um, this is, if you have, if you have had a hooded figure experience, please email me. And I've thought about emailing this person. And he, he does mention something about the shadow people. This wasn't a shadow person. Oh, and I want to throw in there years ago, um, I have a photo. I'll have to scan it and, up, and upload it and make a video about it. But I have a photo that was taken. I can't even explain. It's strange. But there was a hooded figure um, right in the camera, right in the photo. Um, I don't even remember taking the picture. It's not even something you would take a picture of. Uh, it wasn't even, a, I, I'm assuming the camera went off by itself. I'm thinking the depth of it is just strange. Wherever this cam the camera would have been setting, there was nowhere the camera could have been setting to get the picture that it took. It's just crazy. You'd have to be in the kitchen of 
this room where this picture was taken, you'll see a gray face and a hooded person. I'll have to do a video of that. I, and I, I remember when I got those photos uh, developed and everybody was wanting, um, you know, people were wanting to see these pictures and they're like, even my family and they're like, well, my friend wants to see this picture and they, I made copies for people and passed this thing around. It was, it's a very creepy looking photo. So, um, these things have probably been around me for a long time. So it made me wonder what I did to, uh, to bring this on. If I did, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I've never been involved in it. I, you know, I don't think I worship any kind of dark deities or entities or anything like that. And I don't think you have to, I think it's just, they, you empaths and people who are sensitive and just that you just attract everything. You're a magnet to this stuff and they want to drain your energy. It's not necessarily that I ask for that to happen to me. But before I go any further, I watched the documentary that was on Netflix around that time um, about sleep paralysis. And there is a lady on there. Um, she, her experience on how she got this entity away from her is very similar to mine. Now, after this happened to her, she became a Christian. She felt that, that it helped save her. And so she became a Christian and joined the, you know, joined the church. Um, so I thought that was kind of odd when I was watching it. And I go, oh my gosh, it's exactly what I did. But I knew that Christ could help me. And this lady, she just remembered and heard of Christ. So you, I'll play it for you right now. It's pretty interesting. I'm wearing something red, like a dark red Oops, robe sorry. of some kind, or something red. And I, tr I tried to look at the face, but I, I couldn't. Like every inch, every centimeter feels like a ton. And so I'm trying to move and I want to see it. And I'm looking, I'm like straining to look up, straining to look up. I, I, could, I, I could barely move my head. It was almost like going like this, like. Um, and then I, I think I said something. I said, I just said, I remember this guy, his name is Jesus. And I'm going to use his name right now. And I'm going to say just in Jesus' name, you know, you get out or said, said something to that effect. Jesus. Jesus. And I, f I suddenly sense that the demons or the, the thing that was happening to me, that evil presence, just left, gone. Um, and it was amazing. It was like a feeling of victory. Yeah. Hmm. And they never came back. So there you have it. Um, her, you know, so she, she's someone who apparently wasn't a religious person or she knew of Jesus and knew to call on him or just tried anything. Cause at this point you were so overcome. You are so overcome by this and you can't do anything. So you think I have, what, what can I do? I physically cannot fight these things off. You know, they are so powerful, but they're powerful in a different way. And we are powerful. And uh, that's why they are cowards. We'll get on to this. Cowards and parasites. Um, they wait for you at your most vulnerable point. And that's when they attack and feed off of you. And I think they feed off of your sexual energy, all of your energies. Like when I talked about in my other video about the lower vibration frequencies and how this reality that we're in tries to keep you down in it at all the time because they're feeding off of feeding off of you. So now, like I said, I, at this point I needed answers. I researched and researched what these beings could be. And, you know, I've heard of the djinn and demons and archons and just all kinds of angels, you know, uh, just all kinds of stuff that I needed answers. I needed to know what they were because I needed to know how to fight them. And I knew that I could 
but I was very depressed and a lot of strange things were going on. A lot of strange things were going on at the time. I, my keys were constantly coming up missing. Um, I, things were being hidden from me. And I, I found, I have a really strange story I want to throw in. I had bought this little sun thing that you put in the window and the solar thing and it moves. And uh, I bought this cute little thing, a little pumpkin guy. He's so adorable. And uh, I brought him home. And then the next day I wanted to put him, put him in my window. And I was like, where is this little pumpkin guy I bought? You know, I don't know where I put him. He's in a bag somewhere. Uh, so I just had this strong urge to like find this little pumpkin guy. And for whatever reason, my mom was on my mind a lot. Like I just felt her presence. I just felt her around me. And, and like, I remember when she used to lose her keys all the time and she's like, Julie, just call for your higher power. Your higher self will help you find it. Just say higher power, help me find my keys, you know, or help. So I said, you know what, higher power, help me find this little pumpkin guy. So I thought maybe when I brought the groceries in, I threw him away because he's so tiny. I might have just threw him with bags in the trash. Just didn't, you know, just disregard him. <laughs> All right. So, so I thought, okay, I'll go out to the trash. I looked through the trash inside the house and then I didn't see anything. So something said, get your butt outside and go through the trash cans. So I went outside, went through my trash cans and lo and behold, what I found in my trash can, I couldn't believe it. They were my keys, my, my keys to my car. Now, as I was saying, I was going through my separation. My ex-husband had my other set of keys. He claimed that he lost my keys. So if I would have lost those keys, it would have cost me a lot of money to have a dealership make me these keys. I, I would have been screwed. So I... Finding my keys in the garbage, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't even looking for them. And so I felt like, oh my God, my keys. And after I found them, five minutes later, the trash men come by to, to take the trash. I was like, if I wouldn't have went out there when I was so urged to go, something urged me to go, I would have lost my keys. It would have cost me a lot of money and I would never even have known that they were in the trash. I would have been looking for that. I didn't even know if my keys were lost. I was looking for something else. So when I came inside, I I, I thought, you know what? I, I this, this strange things have been going on. And I said, you know what? You guys, if, if it's you cowards doing this to me, you're not going to win. And I heard this you know, growling, like laughing, like, ha, ha, you know, and I said, you're cow. And I just learned to not be afraid of them. I get angry. I get very angry and I fight back. And as I was listening to some other people talk, um, especially the, oh my gosh, is it Carla Turner? I want to say when she was talking about the abductees and she was saying the way to fight these energy parasite is to get angry because they can't feed off of that. For some reason, anger is something that they just can't feed off. They like fear better. So that kind of has been my way. But now going, getting back to being feeling helpless and hopeless and not knowing and, and through my research, I mean, I was Googling all of the time. I came across a couple of articles and um, they're written by a person named Cameron Day. I do not know Cameron Day. I do not know. I don't know him personally. I've never met him. I've never spoken to him about my experience. Nothing. I've, I've always wanted to because I wanted to thank him for his articles because I feel like if I wouldn't have found them, I wouldn't have an idea on how to deal with it at all. I was so alone and in fear and going through so much at the time that I don't even know what I, I, I don't know what I would have done. It, it would have, it would have taken me a longer process. I, you know, eventually I would have figured it out, but, um, his articles were great. The two that I came across and just pretty much sums it up. Um, I'm going to click on him real quick, who he is now before I didn't even know what he looked like. And he has a website, ascensionhelp.com. Um, in his bio, he was born in the seventies. Um, and his parents practiced Buddhism. He learned how to do a lot of, and he was doing, I think a lot of um, energy clearing 
and he was having um, experiences that he knew that he was more than just this and, and life is all about love. That's what he said. Um, he he um, partnered with an experienced energy worker and he started doing remote energy clearings. He was studying various esoteric teachings, um, Gnosticism, quantum quantum physics, the shadow self. Um, so he said he started getting subtle messages from higher self. And I, I want to cry because my mom would always say, just ask higher self for help. They'll help you. It'll help you. Um, that I should do energy work again. I finally started listening in 2008. When I was very simply told by my higher self, you have a gift, share it. Thank you, Cameron Day. Thank you for sharing it. Your higher self is right. Thank you so much um, for that. If you ever come across my video or for anybody that knows him, thank you so much because he helped me. He truly did help me. Um, so here's the, the article that I came across. Um, I'll get back to this area right here. Uh, but this is it. Sorry if it's making you guys dizzy. It's from the N5D website. It says, why I am no longer a light worker. And I thought, why am I, why is this article coming up from my experience? Like I was trying to research what these were and why I'm no longer a light worker. And I'm telling you what, if you, I don't care what you believe in. This is an article you really need to read. Um, it explains a lot. There's dark um, versus false light. So everyone says, you know, go, or that movie, uh, what is it called? Anyways, Carol Ann, go into the light, uh, Poltergeist. You know, it doesn't mean that the light is good. You you got to be careful what you, uh, you ask for. Because not all light is love love light and he goes on to explain this so um light workers are being thoroughly used and i've always felt that i've always felt something was going on um because you you never feel like you've had any sleep you never you could sleep for hours and you feel like you've been in a battle i've woken up with sore muscles like what did i do i did workout or something was i in you know the astral uh gym working out um just feel like you're constantly battling something or doing something. Well, here I got to this point with the solutions for the duality, duality afflicted. So how does a person get out of this duality paradigm? The first step is to engage the self-clearing system protocols and revoke all agreements that you have made with any beings that don't have your best interest in mind. Next, revoke all agreements to see reality in polarized terms. Every time you revoke agreements, be sure to reclaim your energy that had gone into them. Then affirm your commitment to transcend the control paradigms of the corrupt demiurge without being sidetracked by pointless polarity battles. And I did this. I did this. And I'll tell you what. I felt, I thought that I felt alone before and outcasted because of this experience. I certainly felt it after I did the energy clearing. And he'll say, um that let me find it here after you have engaged this process you may notice less contact from the false light beings and you might feel a little lonely a little lonely you might feel a little lonely oh you'll feel really alone until you get used to the changes this is a very good time to strengthen your connection to your own higher self and i did and i felt like this i thought you know i really I, I even questioned my love or belief in Christ that I was like, are you even real? But I knew that he was. And I was like, Christ, I did this in my head. And I, and I sat and I did all this clearing and I broke all these contracts and I revoked everything and brought back my energy. And I said, Christ, I feel, I feel somewhat guilt or shame for this. That I have to just refuse you for now as well. Because... I really need to get my shit together. I need to like figure out what's going on. And I didn't get anything bad. It was just a very alone. It was just kind of like, you know, you, you've experienced some kind of trauma and you're like, you know, I, I've, 
had this really bad relationship and I think I really need to figure out who I am and get myself to, and that was kind of like what it was. It was just like, I really need some time to think. Uh, and that's what I did. This is a very good time to strengthen your connection to your own higher self, the core of earth and the galactic core. And I did, I spent so much time in nature. I just sat in meditation, doing mantras and yoga and just reconnected to just this inner knowledge inside of me that I hope I make sense when I explain this, but this inner knowledge is inside of you that's activated. It's just there. It's like you have this little mini library inside of you, but it's so full of knowledge and a lot of things activate it. You know, a lot of good foods and vitamins and nature and, you know, stretching and mantras where you're just, you know, and just relaxing and affirmations it activates, I believe, this is my belief, it activates information. You have memory in your cellular, in, you have cellular memory and in your DNA of your ancestral knowledge, even if there are such things as past lives. You have that information of all of that memory. It carries on with you to each life. It carries on with you forever. It's there. You have your own Akashic record. You are a walking library of knowledge. You have the ability to heal yourself. You have the ability to dive into that, dive deep into that knowledge and transform to what you want to be. It's always been with you and it'll stay with you. It's passed down. I believe when some, our ancestors leave before us, our family members who leave, they pass that on to you. Like here, I don't need this. I have it, but I'm going to share this with you. I'm going somewhere else. You know, meet you later. That's kind of how I see it. So I felt extremely alone. And it says, as you adjust, you may notice better sleep. And I did. And a sense that you can see through deceptions disguised with positivity more easily. And I did. I learned how to do that. And I learned how to, if anybody comes into my environment, my space, you have to, you have to be, resonate with my energy. You have to radiate. You have to be, if you want to be around me, you've got to level up. It's not happening anymore. And it's something that you continue to learn how to do and you have to continue practicing um, to get there. Now, his other article, Never Call Them Archons, How You Can Help Bust Up the Matrix. So this is another another thing. Um, I will, And it says, I will never... I will never address them as my ruler or superior in any way, just like I wouldn't consider physical intestinal parasites as my superior, even though they might cause me physical discomfort until I remove them from my body. And I'm glad that he said that because I think from my experiences, physical parasites, these entities are parasitic entities and, the, and they are in the astral realm. And we have the physical realm parasites here and I believe that they work together they really work together and I wish that I had the equipment and the the lab and the money and the people to help me research this because I think I think the scientific community already knows this they're not going to tell you any a lot of this stuff's not they're not going to tell you any of this stuff whether it's real or not um, but I'm glad that he Mentioned that because that was kind of what I was finding out in my own research. Um, so these are really good articles. It, it really helps you get your power back. Even has a video here um, that you can watch. Um, so yeah. As I, uh, you know, go on through life and research more and experience more stuff, you know, that I'm like, oh, What's going on? I do feel more powerful. I feel like I can heal. I can help people. I kind of practice on people that are close to me. I don't really tell them. Um, probably should, but I don't think they'd really believe it anyways. And I've kind of done, you know, if it had some back pain or something like that, and I wait till 
you know, they're relaxed or sitting near me and I'll just kind of put my hand around and I've helped, I think I've helped people. They're like, well, how happened to that back pain you've been having for two weeks? They're like, I don't know. It just went away. And, and, uh, why, what did you do? That's what they'll say. Why, what did you do? <laughs> so on that note, I was reading an article that was sent to me not too long ago about, it was called Granny, G-R-A-N-N-Y, Granny Witches. And I was reading that uh, about folk magic. Um, and I noticed some similarities with these people that were lived in the App- Appalachian, um, West Virginia, Kentucky, kind of that area. And they, this was a lot with my family. Um, on my mom's side, it's Irish, Welsh. My dad's side, Cherokee, Seneca, Iroquois. And um, so I noticed a lot of them were, had a lot of similar characteristics. What MUFON describes, a lot of abductees have these same characteristics. And um, these people, you know, inner intertwined their cultures and they were heal natural healers and they came from you know the ethnicity thing they had that going on when I when I read that um it that's what it got into my mind about abductees and the similar characteristics I'm losing my train of thought so they also talked about shamanism. The shamanism is something that I, so far, my research so far, what I think shamanism is, is something that you can't force. I mean, if you do force it, be prepared because it's not what you think it is. It's not going to be rainbows and butterflies. Um, and I think a lot of people want to be, get involved in shamanism because they want to, um, they think it's some kind of, uh, status or some kind of authority of, of some sort. I, I don't think it's, it's probably not anything very pleasant. And it seems like there's always going to be conflict with shamans. They're always having to experience something. And so I, I just thought, what is the connection? What is the connection between abductees, alien abductees and shamanism? Well, I can't believe it because when I Googled it, I got this stuff that came up. Um, this thesis um, written by Simon Brian Harvey Wilson. <laughs> Shamanism and alien abductions, a comparative study. So somebody has done some research. And it says some UFO researchers claim that being abducted by aliens can be compared with sham shamanic initiation experiences in traditional societies and that both types of experience may be similarly transformative, leading to a more spiritual or animistic worldview, a deep concern for the environment and the development of paranormal abilities such as healing, like the folk healing. Uh, this... Study is designed to investigate blah, 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 similar to the, the typical shaman. If so, this is limited uh, to do this. Okay, I don't really want to read to people. So you can look it up. There it is. Google it. I hope they don't mind that I have it in a video. I'm so sorry. Um. I'm probably going to get in trouble, <laughs> but I have to, I have to include it. This is for study. This is for research. Um, that's what it is it's for research people. Come on, let's, let's share the, the knowledge here. Here's another person. Um, Kenneth ring. He talks about the near death and UFO encounters as shamanic initiations. Uh, oh my goodness. So, I mean, it's something to read over if you're interested in these things, if you're experiencing these things. Hello, uh, research it. it. might activate something inside of you. 
Um, that's kind of what happens to me is I just get activated and I start Googling, I start searching and, you know, so the internet does have its good qualities because I mean, Jesus, could you imagine if I walked around my community asking about this stuff? Do you think anybody would even bring this up or know anything about it? Probably not. I don't know. Or if I could find a book like that in the library, doubt it. Not, not in the area I live in. I don't think so. I don't have things like that. So I hope that I'm able to share all of this knowledge. Like nobody gets mad and copyright stuff. I really hope they don't get upset because this is, I'm trying to introduce other people's work, w trying to get their work out there and introduce it and hopefully helps people figure out what's going on because um, we're trying to find answers here. The experience that I had was terrifying, like I said. I, I'm not afraid anymore because I, I'm not afraid. I don't want to experience it again. It's not something that I want to experience again by any means, but I'm not terrified. I have an understanding. I have a better understanding of what's going on. I have complete confidence that I can help myself through another encounter. If it happens, I hope that it doesn't. Um, I would like to some somehow make more sense of it, but sometimes I think, you know, I'm I only know what I know now, what whatever it is that I need to know for now. And that's okay. It's it's okay. Um but I share this stuff because I want to know more and I also want to help other people. I don't think these things happen because they just happen and you just sit in a corner somewhere wondering what you're going to do next. You know, what are you going to say next? What do you just do nothing with it? It wouldn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but anyways, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Uh, I don't know. It's back to this dude. Uh, but I'll definitely get that photo. I'll do a little video about that. Um, that photo that I have of the hooded and he has like a gray face, like a pale gray slate face, strange looking being, which is funny because where the picture was taken, I'm referring back to this photo that I was taken years ago uh, by accident. No one took, I don't, I don't think anybody took the picture. It's strange. Um, something took the picture and there was like a, like a uh, light, like a long stream of light going down. But in the kitchen, I would always feel this presence come up behind me while I was doing dishes. And I could just feel it. The hair on the back of my neck would stand up. So it's funny to me seeing where this face was at. It was in that area where I would get that feeling um, a lot in that kitchen. So I'll try and make a video of that sometime. It'll be a real short one because I just want to show you the photo. And um, then I think my next thing I want to talk about is the uh, experience I had in the woods. Um, it has it deals with the missing 411 and some questions I have with that uh, because I am an avid hiker. I love to be out in the woods. I love the forest. I love the trees. That is where I want to be at. If I go at least once a day, um, I have to be in nature. If I can't be in nature, I park near it. <laughs> if I have to be at work, I'm parking near trees. I have to have something. Um, so with the missing 411, if you're familiar with that, that instills a lot of fear. And I had some questions that I asked while I was in the forest once. And I'm going to do a video about that. I also have a video of some the way the trees were reacting or responding to my questions. But anyways, I'm going to cut it short. Thank you all for listening. Um, I know this video is longer than some of my other ones, but I appreciate it. I really, truly hope that somebody hearing this is, is getting further along with their research or it's answering questions for them, or it's just simply bringing you some kind of comfort knowing that you're not alone because you're not, you're not alone. And you do have, and I don't say that, oh, because there's these guys around. No, because there are people out there that are just like you experiencing these things. And they have tons of questions. 
And, um, you know, if it wasn't for Cameron Day and these other people, you know, I don't know what I'd do. So if you know something, get it out there. If you have experiences, get it out there and help others, you know, it helps yourself. And as always, everyone, be the peace and harmony that you desire in your life. Thanks for listening. Take care.